2023 KTM 250 SXF behind me. You've seen this bike or variants of this bike here in the shop before. Get ECU, Vortex, we're gonna throw that at you today on the dyno and talk about some of the cool, neat technologies that we use here in the Git to give us what I consider to be an advantage. Additionally, I've got a pipe test in this video. This is a full Yosh tie system for this KTM. Uh, I was gonna throw an FMF test in there for you guys. I tested it, videoed it, got all the results, and then unfortunately, I just lost my dyno computer and had to get a new one. I lost about six months worth of data that we hadn't backed up. Huge screw up on my part, videos and the whole work. So, not gonna be able to show that to you guys in this video, but we're gonna show you a stock exhaust versus full Yosh and kind of discuss what we see. So, Vortex, get. Let's get the dyno and make some noise. First up, throw the Vortex in. In this chart, we're showing the Git ECU in green still and the Vortex ECU in red with the stock exhaust. Almost the same result you see with the Yosh, except both of them are down on power than what they show with the Yoshimir exhaust. So the Yosh is a fantastic exhaust. In this case, with the Git ECU, we're peaking at 4347. So the Yosh is worth about one horsepower exactly. In here on this Vortex, we're 4202. Now let's show you the air fuel um, ratio with this stock exhaust because that's what we had our bung in. So I'm going to show you the torque curves and then we'll show you the air fuel ratios for each exhaust. Okay, oops. Let me get this torque curve. There we go. All right, so here's the air fuel ratios between the two setups. Now, obviously the torque difference looks really big here because the graph is condensed now. This is something you have to be wary of when you're comparing graphs. Companies might manipulate how they do their graphs. So this looks like a huge power improvement when the reality is, as you saw, it's about one horsepower. So you can see both ECUs are very similar in the air fuel department. Uh, the Vortex is a little bit richer in certain areas and ours is a little bit leaner in certain areas, but overall they're both under 13.0 and they're above 12.5 for the most part. The Vortex down here is a little fat at 9,000 at 12.1. Um, but with the Yosh exhaust, both of these ECUs are tuned around that setup and they get a lot closer. Um, so the Vortex actually is right around this air fuel you see with the Git on the Yosh. So just to kind of show you that, um, what we're looking at there, and I can go richer with the Git and get the same power. The difference in power is not the ignition and it's not the fuel quantity in this chart. It's our little bit secret sauce that we'll talk to you on after this in our conclusion. So just kind of wanted to show that there and uh, go from there. You can see we're very similar in what we've chosen for air fuel curves in the top end. A um, little bit different through here, but real similar all the way across the board. So we both feel that these areas are, are where the air fuel should end up for this bike for best performance. guys let's take a look at this Yoshimira versus Yoshimira on a Git and a Vortex. In green we have our Git ECU and in red we have our Vortex ECU. 
This little blip at the top that both these SKUs show, that's actually not accurate. It has to do with how the software works uh, as you approach the limiter. So sometimes you'll see this blip, sometimes you won't. This is understanding how your dyno works, how your software works. Um, and so anyway, if you're trying to say, oh, our bike's hitting 45 right here, that's inaccurate. And so anybody who would report that is not doing so accurately. If we were to rev this bike out to say 15,000, which we're not gonna do, but you would see the power start to just slightly lay over here. Um, and then as it hits a limiter, you would kind of see that little tail again. Has to do with software. So this is what we did with our Git versus Vortex. And what's crazy is the air fuel ratios on these two ECUs is almost identical. And that's what we talked about and what we're gonna talk about at the end of the video with some of our Git secret sauce. Now, so here we have the stock exhaust system, Git ECU versus Git ECU. So it's the exact same tune-up, same ECU, and it's just a pipe swap. So this Yosh did really, really well. We've got gains all the way across the curve. And again, that's a little bit of dyno data. Um, it isn't accurate. So you could just imagine that it would just continue this line above the red. Really nice result with the exhaust, impressive product. You can see we're just shy of 45 horsepower right here, 44, 45. Fantastic result. All right, guys, let's talk about our results. Get ECU, Vortex ECU. We were able to make about one more horsepower on our Get ECU setup than the Vortex. That Vortex has been done by a big time player in the ECU and engine performance space. They've done a great job with it, and the tune up is right on the money. So what is the secret sauce that we have with this kit that's making more power? I can't tell you exactly what it is, but I can tell you it's the same type of technology that Factory Com is running. It's the same, same type of technology that actually one of the OEM manufacturers uses on their stock ECUs. And because of this technology, it's actually very hard to improve upon the stock ECU on that manufacturer's bike if you're just running a stock bike. That technology bridges the gap between dual injection and single injection from a power standpoint. So dual injection over the last 10 years has always had about a one and a half to one horsepower improvement, pretty much from nine to 10,000 RPM onwards on a 250. Dual injection improves the atomization of the fuel and it also improves the intake charge density. It helps cool our intake charge a little bit better. This unique technology that's exclusive to the Git ECUs was developed a couple years ago. We kept it close to our chest. We haven't disclosed much about it, and I'm still not gonna tell you what it is. But I can tell you that with the same air fuel ratio, which is basically what we saw in our test today between the Vortex and the Git, they're running the same air fuel ratios. And I can move the air fuel ratio on either ECU, say just one point either direction, like like half a like not one point but a tenth or two tenths or three tenths either direction and the power stays about the same on each ECU it doesn't change pick up or lose four strokes have a fairly wide tuning window as to what air fuel ratio will make good power so the reason the get makes more is this technology it is improving the atomization and improving the charge density of our air entering the engine it only applies to KTM 250Fs and Gas Gas Husqvarna's, as well as Honda 250Fs. And the reason that is, is because the injector size and the fuel pressure have to be the right setup in order to implement this new technology. It's really, really neat. It works great. We've been using it for a couple years now, and it's had awesome success. So what did you guys think? Nothing wrong with the Vortex. The Git ran awesome. The Vortex ran awesome. Both are great options for your bike. We sell Git because we believe in their technology. We believe them to be a technological leader. The Wi-Fi smartphone tuning is where they originated, and Yamaha now has that stock. But that came from Git. Dual injection technology into the motocross space. You could get that from Git in 29, 2009, 2010. Just as a race shop like me, I didn't have to be a special race team to get that technology. They were the only ECU company at that time offering that stuff. And nowadays, Internally, the software, the firmware, you can kind of think of that as the operating system. And then the, uh, the operating system and then the program within the operating system is really advanced. The Git has awesome technology in that department, and that's why I'm with them. The Vortex is a well-proven product. Lots of shops in the U.S. are using it, and they're having great success with it, too. So really excited to show you the guys that in this video today. I'm sweating. It's over 100 degrees here in Texas. It's been hot this year. This bike is a ripper. We're really excited uh, to 
continue to show you guys what we have coming for this bike, but it's already a monster for a 250F. Just shy of 45 horse in our testing here, and it makes so much power that like a stock 252 stroke of almost every brand except KTM don't outrun this bike as far as horsepower goes, which is pretty impressive for a basically stock bike, fuel, ECU, and pipe. Um, Yoshinari exhaust, fantastic product, ran absolutely awesome in this test. No complaints with it. It made more horsepower, fit and finish is great. The tie is beautiful. I say no complaints, one complaint, why is that can so big? It's really huge, twice the size of the stock can and bigger than the FMF um, and heavier. So I'm not sure why they have to have all that size if they're not gonna be lower on the DBs in sound testing. Thanks for watching. And until I see you guys next time, happy riding, have fun out there, be safe.